it has been said that Tiger Woods was born in Wolfsburg, Germany. And Jeremy Clarkson still thinks that this is a good car. Hello world, welcome to Amsterdam. This is the 2018 Golf GTI Performance Pack version. It is the latest version of the most known German hot hatch and uh, probably the most sold one. The front part of the car presents the same aggressive lines on the bonnet. I mean nothing changed here in comparison with the older model. Uh, this version has the same two liter TSI engine, uh, but with more power, 245 horsepower and 370 newton meter, while the previous model had three, 230 horsepower and 350 newton meters. The red GTI logo reminds you that you have indeed a performance pack version. Uh, this brings to the table more power, better brakes and an amazing front differential which maximizes the grip. Uh, here are the fog lights, which also light up when the car is cornering. The, the facelift brings an update to the headlamps. These are LED equipped, which indeed look far better than the normal or even Xenon equipped ones. So of course, this is new technology which was introduced to bring its advantages, right? The engine. The engine, if you look at it, it is not impressive. It's small, it has TSI in red printed on the plastic cover here, and that's it. Nothing more to say about this. Uh, as mentioned, the engine is producing 245 horsepower. The car mass is around 1,400 kilos. And the model that I have here has a 7-speed DSG gearbox. Many say that if you want to feel the true racing experience of a GTI, uh, you need to drive a manual gearbox. I can agree with that, as indeed a manual gearbox has the role of making a symbiosis uh, between driver and uh, the car, especially when you are driving a sports car. But this DSG version is truly amazing. I mean, it is highly optimized and has its advantages in terms of feedback and, uh, and performance. Now, I will go on the right side of the car to show an overview of the things characteristic to this 2018 Golf 7 Performance Pack GTI. So, see you on the other side. So we are on the right side of the car. The folding mirrors are built also in an aerodynamic shape. We can see the GTI logo available also on the car's side. What is interesting is that for the performance pack version you have the red painted brakes staying behind the 18 inch wheels which are characteristic to the model. What I like is this shape here. You see? It reminds me of the Golf 4. This fuel door uh, has now more personality being built in a shape with parallel angles. I like that. Uh, the space that you get in this car is more than convenient. Of course, it is not an appropriate to consider this car as a station wagon or limousine. But even so, you'll get enough space from this hot hatch. Couples are able to travel with comfort. Let's move now to the back of the car to have a look also there. We are at the back side of the car. At the back side of the car, we have the full LED taillights, which create a real spectacle when driving behind the car in the evening or night. Though these two exhausts represent another characteristic of the GTI, I mean, having bigger and louder exhausts tell us that we have the performance pack version. Uh, those extra horsepowers need to be heard. We are not talking about Golf 7R exhausts or about a 600 horsepower car. 
but I would say it's still sufficient to observe a GTI performance spike on the street. Uh, on the lower side, we can see this good quality sport plastic rear bumper, which increases the downforce uh, coefficient of the car. Uh, a sports car needs aerodynamics, right? The trunk capacity is reasonable taking into account this is a hot hatch. I mean, for us, it was more enough than more than enough considering a weekend travel carrying personal stuff and all filming equipment. Comparing with other hot hatches like BMW 135e or Renault Megane RS, the 380 liter trunk will provide the traveler with enough space for things to be stored during a short trip. This car has back camera which now is hidden under the BMW under the Volkswagen logo and will appear when when putting the gar, uh, the the gear in reverse so now let's see how the interior looks and what technology do we find on board hello everybody this is me again uh, i stopped by to eat something on my way from amsterdam to frankfurt uh, and i thought to myself this would be a good opportunity to briefly show you the interior of the car uh, this is how the LED exterior lights look on evening. When driver doors open, you can easily notify the red line available. This is characteristic to the GTI. On the GTD model, you will find a white line. This line can be seen on every door of the car. On the door, you will find the conventional mirror controls, including folding and hitting buttons. Uh, this uh, the windows control including the windows lock button the car I have here doesn't have keyless so when putting the key in ignition the 12 inch active info display from Volkswagen is showing off. when even if the option of this option costs like 2,000 euro more I would say it deserves every cent it is not just nicer to watch but also easier for the driver. Navigation screen can be moved here. Here on the left, you can see the lights control button, the leather steering wheel with red th threads, it's built using good materials, real aluminum, leather and good quality plastic make this look like a proper steering wheel for a sports car. Uh, on the left side are the ACC active cruise control buttons, uh, plus the volume button and on the top on the right side you can find the buttons to control the active info display options uh, you can also find buttons for voice control and media setting media settings yeah this car has pedal shifting which work indeed very very well the nine inch infotainment screen is very smooth on touch responds very prompt and accurate. Below we have the climate control. I will not insist on that as I guess this is quite familiar to you. I will mention only that the car has heated seats for driver and right passenger. We have a sync button which has the role to synchronize the climate settings on the passenger side with the one already configured on the driver side. This is the emergency signal. On the roof, we have the interior lights button and other three functions for SOS, service and information. SOS button will call the Volkswagen Center. Service button will show you when next maintenance details are required. Uh, we have a, the, the gearbox is a seven speed DSG gearbox. Shortly, it has two clutches. One is for controlling the odd gears and the other one is for controlling the even gears. So in every moment, for every speed, there is a clutch available to take control. Near the gearbox stick, the gearbox stick, yeah, we have four buttons. Start and stop function, stops and restart the engine in specific condition. Uh, if the consumer and the consumers are not taking too much load from the battery, the engine will stop when you stop completely the car. If the auto hold function on which we will speak in a minute is activated, 
you can take the foot on the brake and the engine will be stopped. If auto hold is not uh, active, when releasing the foot on the brake, the engine will automatically start. Below is the ESP, Electronic Stability Program, which is activated by default. For deactivation, this button uh, here needs to be pressed and a notice is showed in the active info display. Automatic parking system, the system maneuvers the steering wheel and the driver needs to control the gearbox and pedals. I already made a video, I will show you shortly now. The below button is for parking sensors. They will um, automatically activate when you put the car in reverse. The sensors will automatically activate if you get too close to obstacles, uh, but can also be activated anytime by, by pressing the button. The car has uh, electronic parking brake uh, button and auto hold function. Electronic parking brake pressed means the red parking sign is appearing and uh, when auto hold button is pressed means that the green parking sign is appearing. The auto hold function helps especially when the car is in an uphill or downhill situation and you as driver don't want to stay with the foot on the brake because the car will go up or down. The quality of the materials from the inside is satisfying as you find in all today's German cars. Even if we nowadays live in a world where cheap plastic is more popular in car manufacturing, as it is easier to obtain and uh, has the advantage of being lightweight, uh, in this March 2018 Golf you will see good quality plastic. This car uh, has only 13,000 kilometers. The space in the back is reasonable, as I mentioned also in the exterior presentation. The driver's seat is configured for me, I am 185 and I still have almost 3 fingers of space. Hi guys, I just arrived home in Frankfurt, I hope you see something, it's a little bit dark here but I hope you see something, I just wanted to film uh, also uh, in the car with me driving to share my experience over these three days because I have the car for almost three days from Friday to Sunday and tomorrow I need to bring it back on this opportunity <clears throat> uh, I want also to, to thank Volkswagen Frankfurt for renting me this car this was a truly awesome experience for me this weekend to to enjoy uh, driving this car for I think I have already 1050 kilometers that I drove so I've made an idea how the things go with uh, with this car so guys yeah let's recap we have here a 2018 Golf 7 GTI performance pack version the latest Volkswagen Golf 7 model well it is improper to say this is the new version of a Golf 7 no it's a facelift and what should be mentioned compared with the non-facelift model is new head and tail lights, new alloy wheels design and a new placement for the two exhausts, new infotainment design with no physical buttons but with touch screen, more power from the engine, 15 horsepower and 20 newton meters more. So we have 2 liter TSI petrol engine, straight four cylinder, 245 horsepower and 370 newton meter front wheel drive car with an amazing electronic differential 7 speed DSG gearbox active info display automatic parking back camera and many other available options this for 39000 euro i would like to share my thoughts uh, on this car based on four aspects the first one would be price. 
versus what you get and what are the other options. The second one, who should buy this car? Who is its audience? Then good things versus bad things. And the fourth one, and finally, how was my experience driving it? What are the conclusions? You pay 39,000 euro and you get the most notorious four-door sports car with latest generation DSG gearbox, full LED lights, 245 horsepower, automatic parking, back camera and a lot of history. It has sufficient space to carry more than a trolley when you go on your vacation to the seaside. Uh, it has the latest technology so you can drive safe and for long distances. For 33,000 euro, you can get a Ford Focus ST with a manual gearbox and almost the same options available. Or you can get a 40,000 euro BMW 125e series with the iDrive infotainment and rear wheel drive. Or you can get for the same money the new Renault Megane RS, which has 280 horsepower and new four-wheel drive system. Well, Ford Focus ST should not exist when the world has Ford Focus RS or Ford, Ford Mustang, which are truly amazing cars. Then BMW is unstable at high speeds due to the rear-wheel drive, and the Megane RS is quite an interesting option, but I'm not sure what to say about the four-wheel drive system. It's still new. So what should one choose? This is the first hot hatch ever made. 40 years of tradition and work. I would be very tempted to say that single young people or couples would drive this car. The partner in the couple, from their perspective as a passenger, would have thought and expected that the golf is a quiet game played only by people who, all, who always drive 40 in a 50 km per hour area. Or people that don't wait for the petrol tank to be empty, but refill it when only one third is gone. I think the Golf GTI is not for that passenger. I think the GTI is for the driver. Golf GTI wants its driver to use both hands on the steering wheel most of the time. The car, look, the car looks like a proper GTI. The new design with the exterior lights combined with the bigger exhausts give the exact level of dynamism that you should expect from a GTI. The performance pack enforces this idea. A lot of red bigger brakes, more power, and an amazing differential are the ingredients of a true motorway stallion. A lap time feature is also available so that you can time the serious things. Even if it's not a long car, it provides sufficient space for luggage and for people. And features. The car comes with the latest technologies in the field, like line assist or automatic parking and wireless charging. Now, moving to another topic, I've been informed that the suspension is a little bit softer in the performance pack version compared to the classical GTI. For me, it was no difference at all. We have here a sports car which has support suspension. It is not as comfortable as a Bentley or Mercedes, but should it be? The fuel tank is too small. You just cannot put the same fuel tank as the one from 1.0 TSI Golf. When you drive the car as a proper GTI, the 50 liter petrol tank simply becomes too small. 
I understand there are always weight-related aspects, but still. Let's sum up. Three days, more than 1,000 km and a lot of fuel wasted. But we gather experience and had the pleasure of driving a GTI. It doesn't look complicated. It doesn't want to be noticed, but it gets noticed. You want technology? You get technology. You want feedback from the engine? You get it. Would you buy it? Well, I would definitely do it. Located at the heart of Amsterdam's Museum Square, the Rijksmuseum is one of the world's most renowned art museums and a true must-see. Even if you have only little time to spare, a walk through the Gallery of Honor will offer you a glimpse of Dutch's finest art. 8,000 artistic and historical objects tell the story of 800 years of Dutch history from the year 1200 right up to the present. In 2012, the museum took the unusual step of making some 125,000 high-resolution images available for download via its Rijksstudio web platform, with plans to add another 40,000 images per year until the entire collection of 1 million works is available, according to the museum's director of collections. Focusing on the building itself, it is worth mentioning that the historic design for the Rijksmuseum, which combined the Gothic and the Renaissance styles, had been drawn up by Pierre Caverge, the Rijksmuseum's architect. The official opening of the Rijksmuseum took place in 1885. Going to the passage. The atrium is made up of two spaces that are connected by way of a tunnel underneath the passage. The atrium has its entrance in the passage. The original brick walls of the passage have been replaced with large expanses of glass allowing passers-by to admire the interior courtyards. At more than 2 meters tall, the slogan measures almost 24 meters wide. Launched in September 2004, the sign at the back of the Rijksmuseum 
has become one of the city's most photographed icons. It always manages to inspire the novice photographer. You rarely see the letters without people in front, behind, or on top of the slogan, taking photos and selfies, which help market the city through social media. Amsterdam Marketing happily estimates the letters are photographed some 6,000 times a day. Happily, because the original intention, that of promoting Amsterdam abroad in the wake of the financial crisis, has worked far beyond expectation. At the request of the city of Amsterdam, the I Amsterdam letters are to be removed from Museum Plein at the beginning of December 2018. The change in location is in line with the new city government's intention to increase the efforts of distributing visitors more widely. The move supports the strategy to make Amsterdam larger, which includes stimulating repeated visitors to explore different areas of the city. People who would still like to take a selfie with the letter of museum on Museumplein will need to move fast. But for those who missed the opportunity, the latter will still be there at Schiphol. A third set of letters already changes location around the city, making appearances at all kinds of events in the city. Visit Rembrandt Harmansun von Rijn's home and workshop. For 20 years, Netherlands' greatest artist lived and worked in this impressive building in the heart of Amsterdam, now a museum, the Rembrandt House Museum. With a 17th century inventory as a guide, the house has been meticulously refurbished with furniture, art and objects from that time to give visitors a complete Rembrandt experience. The museum has an almost complete collection of Rembrandt etchings and stages inspiring exhibitions about Rembrandt, his predecessors, contemporaries and pupils. The Rembrandt House Museum is also a venue for exhibitions of work by contemporary artists who have been inspired by the work of Rembrandt, their 17th century predecessor. Go and meet him in his own home. Small tip, the daily demonstrations of paint preparation and etching are quite interesting to see. Anna Maria Grossholt was born in Strasbourg, France. She was trained by a Swiss master of wax anatomy, Philip Curtius. Curtius and his young pupil moved to Paris, where, in time, she would model not internal body parts, but instead the likenesses of Voltaire, Louis XVI, Benjamin Franklin, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. She had lived at Versailles, been art tutor to Louis XVI's sister, and cast the king from life, and later, during the revolution, been ordered by the National Convention to duplicate his severed head. She had the king's blood in her lap. Listen, she used to say, I am history. She may have embellished her life, perhaps exaggerated here and there, but who can blame her for that? She needed her enterprise to succeed. Toussaint lived later in London, and when she died, her collection counted 400 figures. The first Toussaint cabinet of wax figures opened in London at Baker Street in 1835. In 1972, the second European Madame Tussauds attraction opened in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, at the Dam Square. More an attractive ride in an indoor amusement park than an old-fashioned wax figures cabinet, Madame Tussauds in Amsterdam has been modernized, equipped with multimedia effects, set to employ actors and extras, and like any amusement park, it addresses itself mainly to children and teenage visitors.
Nemo Science Museum curates 17,000 technology objects in four core collections lighting, electrical engineering, energy generation and storage, and technology at home. The museum wants to enthuse young people by experimenting for science and technology. Around 38% of visitors are under the age of 18. When did the first electrical appliances appear in our homes? What were they? The story of technology and science is even more compelling when set against the background of the past. It's a past you can see and touch in the special heritage collection. From its humble beginnings as a 13th century fishing village on a riverbed to its current role as a major hub for business, tourism and culture, Amsterdam has had a strong tradition as a center of culture and commerce. The name Amsterdam comes from the river Amstel and the dam that was built to be able to construct the city. It's no coincidence that Amsterdam has become one of the most multicultural cities in the world. The city is now a melting pot of cultures, with residents from 180 different countries. It also embraces a variety of different lifestyles, religions and beliefs. For example, the city is considered by many to be the gay capital of Europe and still has an active squatters movement. It might seem contradictory to outsiders, but the city's enormous variety of residents works by allowing everyone to be who they are and say what they think. The city of Amsterdam can look back on a long and interesting history and today it prides itself on a rich cultural life and a diverse population. The people who live here, the people who work here, the people who study here, and the people who visit here are what makes Amsterdam vibrant and complex. Alongside tulips and windmills, the global image of Amsterdam is one of a city entwined with water. Since its development in the 17th century, Amsterdam's Canal Ring has grown to be one of the world's most unique urban landscapes. And it not only remains a historic and beautiful water network through the city, but a stunning backdrop for fantastic cultural and sporting events throughout the year. Amsterdam has more canals and bridges than Venus. While Venus is the most famous for its canals, this is, isn't because of quantity. Amsterdam, also known as Venus of the North, boasts over 165 canals that compose a widespread network throughout the entire city. And Amsterdam actually has 1,281 bridges, three times as many as Venus. Amsterdam's maritime success in the Golden Age not only led to urban expansion, but a boom in trade and architectural development. This was marked by the building of the city's remarkable canal-side estates in the 17th and 18th centuries, most of which are still standing today. Even if you aren't lucky enough to call one of these monuments your home, there are plenty of ways to experience life by the water in both museums and special events in and around the canals. Since 1999, the city's distinctive canal landscape has officially been protected and, in 2010, the Amsterdam Canal Ring was added to the UNESCO's World Heritage List. In 2013, the Canal Ring also celebrated its 400th birthday.
So, a great and relaxing way to view some of Amsterdam is by taking a cruise on what Amsterdam is famous for, its many canals. For anyone visiting for the first time, it's an excellent introduction to the city's many sites. There are a number of departure points throughout the city, and the tours are available in a multitude of languages, provided by a number of different operators. Whether it's a one-hour tour, a hop-on, hop-off all-day experience, or a romantic candlelight dinner cruise, there are options for every occasion. And naturally, you can have just as much fun when sightseeing on foot or even following the natives on two wheels. Going further, here are other interesting facts about Amsterdam. The city has been ranked among one of the top 25 safest cities in the world. The crime rate here is much lower than any other European capital. Amsterdam residents are the second largest consumers of coffee in the world. Usually, an Amsterdam local consumes about 3.2 cups of coffee per day. During World War II, at the time of the so-called Hunger Winter, Winter of Hunger, in 1944, people were starving so badly that they had to eat tulip bulbs. The majority of Amsterdam is below sea level. At its lowest point, it is 6.7 meters below sea level. All over Amsterdam, there are hidden water taps under the ground. They were installed in fear of a big disaster so that they could always have drinking water. Tap water is safe to drink. The Netherlands, and especially Amsterdam, which has the best water in the country, has the safest and cleanest tap water in Europe. The water in the Amsterdam canals is so clean that artist Zoo gives its elephants pure drinking water straight from the Amsterdam canals. Gin was invented in the Netherlands. It was, and still is, called Jenevier and was originally used for medicinal purposes in the 16th century. Coffee shops are not what you think they are. Coffee shops are alcohol-free establishments where soft drugs legally are sold and consumed. One of the principles of the coffee shop policy is that the sale of alcohol and the sale of soft drugs is separated. Visitors to Amsterdam in the 17th century were surprised about the prostitution being shown so openly in Amsterdam. Also, women walked the streets unaccompanied by men, a sight that was nowhere else seen. Amsterdam has one of the most famous red light districts in the world with window prostitution. There are almost 500 such windows in Amsterdam, next to brothels, for example. Daily, about 1,000 prostitutes are working in Amsterdam, and in a given year, the city sees about 8,000 different prostitutes. When a room is lit with blue or purple light in the Amsterdam red light district, it means the women might possibly be more than just women. Amsterdam's first gay bar still exists. It's Café et Mange on Zidek 63 and it was opened in 1927. The owner, Bet van Biere, was lesbian. She allowed men dancing with men and women dancing with women, but no kissing. Dancing was forbidden in Amsterdam in the beginning of the 20th century. In Amsterdam, people on low income can take their pet to the vet for free once a year. Bees in distress in the world? Not in Amsterdam. Since 2000, there are 45% more bee species in Amsterdam.
Amsterdam has worked hard to abolish harmful pesticides and set up special flower gardens inside the city. Every year, on average, 10,000 bikes are dredged out of the Amsterdam canals. Amsterdam houses are built on wooden poles. Most were drilled in during the 17th century, which is why many Amsterdam houses tend to be crooked and leaning sideways. Yes, you are not mistaken, Dutch people are the tallest people in the world. There are more women than men in Amsterdam. There is especially a surplus of Dutch young women between 20 and 25 year years old. For every 100 men in this category, there are 145 women. As in most of Europe, the Netherlands uses 230 volts AC, which is 50 cycles, compared to 110-120 volts AC, which is 60 cycles, in the United States and Canada. Upward converters that change 110-120 volts to 220-240 volts are difficult to find in Holland, so bring one with you when visiting. Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands. Of the Netherlands. But the government of the Netherlands is seated in The Hague. The European Euro is the currency used in Amsterdam. The Dutch law requires that all taxes and service charges be included in the published prices of hotels, restaurants, cafes, nightclubs, salons, and sightseeing companies. The tourist office's advice on tipping is, tips for extra service are always appreciated but not necessary.